Welcome back to uh, the Future of Photography. I'm Chris and uh, Imar's here, Adrian's here, Jeremiah's here. Hello. Hello. Hi, all. Hi. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Indeed. It is yeah, the New let's Year. Hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, New Year. Let's say it's New Year. January. <laughs> Which New is year. a fact. Mm. <sighs> so the sun has revolved around uh, the solar system once. Is that what it's? No. The Earth has re revolved around Travel. the sun once? No. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, the yeah, Earth goes yeah, around yeah. the sun. Yes, the way it goes. Sun, yeah. Anyway, yeah, something has revolved around, around something, so. and that means that a year is over and a new yeah. new year has started. Cycle, yes. So, well done, anyway, everyone. astronomy <laughs> was always my strength. Um, <laughs> uh, episode uh -huh. one sixty two. Uh, Adrian, you brought this one up. It's all your fault. Uh, we want to talk about <laughs> the problem with photography podcasts. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, let's Why shoot not? ourselves in, in our own feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 because I think, uh, well, we are the future of photography, aren't we? So we're all right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of course we no, are. No, this is, this is something, uh, what have I, uh, this, is, this is something that I, I have observed, and I'm surely not the first to observe it, and I surely won't be the last, but I just thought, you know, th there's, there's a bunch of stuff going on with photography podcasts, photography YouTube, and and yeah, th there's a lot of people I think whose content is a little bit at risk. So so I would say to cut a long story short, well, the problem with photography podcasts is they focus way too much on equipment and not enough on actual photography, be that technique or art or societal impact like we like to do occasionally. Um, and I think that's going to get them into trouble because, as we all know, the global market for cameras is in significant decline um, and you know, we will lose major players before it bottoms out, I am sure. Um, and so what are all those people going to talk about? <laughs> so all the problem of photography podcast is where's the content going to come from? Mm. Yeah. Ah. yeah, I think we, we need to, to really start the discussion by, by talking about what do people look for in mm. a, a photography podcast? Well, that's a very good question. Very and good question. there's two ways of asking it. It's what do people look for when they're listening to a photography podcast? It's also what do people look for when they're making them? What are they, what, what's the, the, the reason for doing it? Because I think everybody has different reasons. And we you could break, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, you know, it's, it's new year, isn't it? It's a healthy time to, to, to think to review, to, to, to plan ahead, to make any changes to your life that you think might be desirable or necessary, you know, all of that sort of stuff. And why, why should photography podcasts get away with that? I mean, you know, we, I know we don't like to take ourselves <laughs> too seriously, but. <laughs> I mean, I mean, okay. So having been a photography podcaster for. Uh, as long as. Podcasts. As long as podcasting Even has been around, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those fossils. I'm one of those <laughs> dinosaurs. OG. OG. Oh, gee, yeah. Well, it, uh, yes, pretty much. Uh, it's, it's going on 16 years now, and podcasting hasn't been around for much longer than that. So, I I remember Tales from the Top Floor when it was it wasn't a podcast; it was on the web. Like, uh, initially, like, no, 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 no. Tips from the Top Floor started as a podcast. Honestly, it started as a podcast, but uh, it had more web content in the beginning. But I think we can we can but, approach yeah. this from like multiple angles, and one of course is uh, maybe look at a bit of the what's out there as photography podcasts. Because I remember when I started, there was there were a whole bunch of podcasts and some were talking gear, some were talking photography, some were doing more experimental stuff. And uh, the majority of them <laughs> faded within a year. They, they just <laughs> went away because turns out it is work to make a podcast regularly. Um, <laughs> Who'd have thought? Well, you run <laughs> out of things to say. Can I offer up a, a kind of a structure to the conversation? Sure, sure. Which is uh, just thinking here. What do people want from a podcast? They want inspiration, maybe, if they are kind of either uh, set in their ways, they want to kind of move out of their little kind of cubby hole. Um, if they are thinking about getting into photography, what does that offer them, etc. So the inspiration part is important. Advice, which is a little different than inspiration. In other words, I'm going down a blind alley. 
how can this be helped? What do I do if I'm walking in the rain with my lens? Does it, et cetera, you know, advice. Learning, which is how do I remove something from a photograph? Like very, very simple and basic learning. And there's a lot of those. Community, right? You want to feel part of a artistic or photographic community. And then news. In other words, what's new on the horizon? Uh, what don't I know about the newest camera that I may want? Um, are any other areas that that um, would offer the kind of motivation to go to a podcast? See, that's the whole thing, isn't it? Motivation and everybody's motivation is going to be different. You're not going to be able to cover all of those things. That's right. Well, under one heading i don't think no but why do you go to a photography podcast or let's, why does let's go around go mm, let's, mm. let's go around we have inspiration advice learning community and news so for each of us here when you listen to a photography podcast and of course we are all biased because we're making a photography podcast <laughs> but when you listen to any of those um what is it that you are personally looking for adrian uh, do you know what? Of, of those, uh, I can relate to many of those. Uh, so certainly the certainly the the conversation and the community piece. That's the thing that, and it's difficult to separate me as a listener from me as a podcaster, I suppose. I but but as uh, uh, even as a listener, you know, uh, uh, the community thing is, is part of it. Um, I think, and often the more niche you get with a podcast, uh, the stronger the community and the greater the engagement. You know, and it's yeah. So so there's that. Uh, the education piece I do like as well. Uh, you know, sometimes you, you it's not all the time. You know, but you sometimes get a snippet that makes you think and sticks with you. you think, oh wow, that I could really do that, couldn't I? Or or that gives me an idea on some project I'm working on. So so that those two those two things. I think for me, a podcast less on the technical side. Um, it's difficult to consume and retain facts just just on audio. It's more entertainment for me, and uh, than mm. than it mm. is about facts. Mm. Uh, so and, and fun, you know. I, I like the idea that a podcast can be a really informal thing, and not so much. Yeah, it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, what we here in the UK would call Radio Four, right? <laughs> which, We're living examples of that. Which is which is which is an odd one because Radio Four, BBC Radio Four, for those that know it, is is famous for both its very formal programs, but also its its uh, experimental comedy. Um, mm. But uh, but I mean the formal sense. I like the fact that we can play around. It, it can be whatever we want it to be, you know, and. Uh, that that comes out as a listener when you're listening to podcasts. If if the podcasters are having fun, that definitely comes across. So, Imar, what is it? And not not necessarily just photography podcasts. When you listen to podcasts, what is it that? Yeah, I think for? if I, uh, depending on what kind of learning, to some degree, but I think if I want to know how to do something technical, I'm probably not going to look for a podcast on that I'd be more likely to look for something visual so in the same way that Adrian says like that it's more enter an entertainment thing I think I think personally podcasts in general for me are something that I don't I don't put a hundred percent of my focus on I'm not going to sit there and just exclusively zone out and listen to a podcast I'm generally doing something else at the same time so it's something you want it to be easy to listen to. You don't want it to be so complicated that you need to go back and listen to it again. You want to be able to take it in while you're also taking in whatever else you're doing at the time. So, um, yeah, I think if I was inspiration, probably is is the one that I'd pick out of Jeremiah's list of um, different qualities. Um, and funny sounds coming from someone. <laughs> my doorbell. I think it's my nice doorbell. to listen to um, conversations where um, maybe with photographers or, you know, on their experience, their process. I like uh -huh. that kind of thing. And Jeremiah, is there anything that you specifically look for, for when you go for podcasts? Well, I mean, I'll, generally speaking, um, I divide my podcasts uh, into uh, really two. 
uh, two areas. One is uh, news or journalism, uh, because unlike radio or television, certainly now, um, we're able to kind of listen to deep dives into particular uh, and specific items that give us more than just the headline. And um, they generally are with people who purport to be and often are uh, experts in that field. And it, it allows a tremendous amount of deep dive journalism into, into that. Uh, the other uh, thing is, is uh, yes, ins inspiration. I, I, I think the randomness often uh, of a podcast in terms of where the subject of the week may go may trigger something for me to explore. And I, I find that randomness to be really helpful for me. If there is technical um, stuff, I like, for example, uh, if I want to do a very specific and particular um, thing with a photograph or a post-production ed editing application, I will find that in YouTube or on YouTube and I can really go through it. And there are some really spectacular teachers um, mm -hmm. who really have uh, a, a great grasp and there's very, very little that I can't find if I, I just don't remember how to do a thing. Um, I'll find it very quickly, but that isn't helpful on, on a podcast. Mm. You know, new photography news is always uh, interesting to me. Um, though, as Adrian pointed out, there is less and less of it. <laughs> In mm. other words, oh, the, this lens that's a point five oh coming and you can get it for 25 bucks and <laughs> it's better than, you know, it's like, whoa. <laughs> also, here in LA, we get to drive around, or we used to anyway, in our cars. So we had a lot more time to listen to podcasts when we're driving. <laughs> and you know, most yeah. of our driving is like 20 minutes to a half an hour to get anywhere. <laughs> Many people don't a have nice... a commute anymore. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> that's it. So you have to be dedicated. <laughs> but th yeah. that's how I, I really break up mine. And what about you, Chris? Uh, if the, Looking, I've just had a quick look through my uh, through my list of podcasts um, in my podcast client, and it's it comes down to two things: it's the inspiration part, and then it's mostly the entertainment part. And I get that entertainment mostly out of interactions between people, like on the podcast, multiple people talking to what we're doing here, pretty much. People talking to each other, everyone bringing their personality to the thing, um, their opinions, their uh, their pet peeves, their whatever, and <laughs> and what that does to each other. Uh, example: I'm I'm a fan of the Accidental Tech Podcast. Now, okay, that is in my in my wheelhouse from a tech point of view because these guys talk tech and I'm interested in tech, so that is fine. But then on the other end, they are so they're they're such great characters that. I it's it's almost a bit like a soap opera like reality TV <laughs> yeah. like you know yeah. from week yeah. to week you get stories that unfold that go on what happened to the thing that you kicked off two weeks ago um, these kind of things that keep me engaged and that are fun for me to to um, be a yeah player. I like that it's like it's the equivalent of a story arc across <laughs> a season isn't it in some ways sort and, of, yeah. uh, and uh, often you get that as well if people share some little snippets of their personal life however much they're you know comfortable to share um it, you you end up feeling that you can you can get to know a little bit about what makes people tick perhaps mm. you know and and that 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 is a picture that gets richer and richer over time as well, so and I, and I the learning, I, I, I'm with you, Jeremiah. The learning is on YouTube now. Short tutorials. Mm. Some some of them are hor hor horrendous, but uh, some of them are really really good and quick mm. and to the point. And um, so, if I want to learn something quickly or at least get an idea about something quickly, then I can usually do this within 10 15 minutes and at least have an idea what something is about. I'm fascinated by by what you said about the entertainment aspect of podcast even the news aspect is entertainment for me you know even that yeah. i think it definitely there's, there's a definitely speaks there's a podcast to... 
Adrian, there's a podcast which I encourage everybody to listen to. It ranges from 30 minutes to two hours. I mean, the, the times are, are odd, and it's called This Week in Virology. Dviv. <laughs> and uh, they're on episode 700 and something. And wow. it is the most nerdy <laughs> podcast of world experts on viruses. They've been doing this for years and years and years. Of course, this is their year. Yes. That's and <laughs> the person like, the, you know, I'd say 40% of it is so, you know, way above my pay grade in terms of the complexity and the technologies and the research and all of that. But these personalities and how they approach the problem solving of viruses from research, medical distribution, all of that stuff is one of the most fascinating and entertaining podcasts that's out there. It's really and insightful, really exactly. obviously. It sounds yeah. like, you know, it's just a step inside their brains. Yeah, and I would never imagine mm. that I would be like, oh, I'm going to subscribe to a, a podcast on virology you know what i mean that, that's the power of the medium of podcast yeah. yeah it is so that personality is i think significant <laughs> and certainly we've come to the right place yeah here we go um so so adrian <laughs> you've you've written a little bit let's let's reel this back into the into the photography podcast arena uh you've written a little intro here where you stipulate that the whole market of photography podcasts is kind of dying uh, not so much the, the for the podcast more for the for for the you know if you're talking about the podcast or the youtube channels or whatever right there whatever you know platform of choice that that does focus on things like equipment uh you know you know lenses and cameras and, and other things um, and that has, in the last 10 years or so, been the section of the market for, for content that has really attracted sponsorship, right? Because, of course, you've got a lot of people who want to push their products. That makes makes sense, doesn't it? Um, but that particular market, as as we know, is is the, the market for the equipment, not the podcasting market, but the market for the equipment is is very much... On, on its knees quite frankly and as i said i i would expect us to lose at least one major manufacturer before the market bottoms out because things are changing right and it's yeah it's there's a double whammy isn't there people like aren't people aren't buying new cameras because they're not allowed out and about at the moment uh but also because the new tools the there's the computational tools like phones are taking over and so what are those people what are those people going to do and it's it, don't take it too seriously it's all a bit tongue in cheek but you know it's it's just a thought about actually there's going to need to be a rebaselining and i thought well you know it's it's the holiday period we think yeah it's a new year we can think about what we want to do in the next year we could even dare i say it, ask our listeners to contribute what they would like to hear mm. from tfop in the next year but uh, I wouldn't want to base a. I wouldn't want to be launching a new platform talking about kit just now. Photography kit no. it might not last too long. <laughs> I, I'm with. I'm totally with you. But then mm. the industry changes. But I also see at the same time. I mean. I mean. Okay. When we look at changes, DSLRs are becoming mirrorless. Mirrorless are going towards smartphones. There's like high resolutions. The accessories change. Uh, look at the emergence of LED lights and. Uh, things changing in size and in price. Um, I see a lot of these changes, but then I also see a lot of those reflected in the media landscape around it, especially in the podcast landscape, because podcasts keep evolving and changing. Those that don't will probably perish, but um, then... <laughs> very, very true, very true. So, so I do I have one example, which I think sits in a gray area, right, which I'd be interested to get a view from all three of you on, which is, and it goes back to, to the, the topic of learning, and I, I see, I don't think I see any more than I ever did, but there are, a, there are a lot of people out there who say, I'm going to teach you photography. Now, so that, you know, I'm going to teach you the exposure triangle and I'm going to teach you about, I don't know, just about depth of field. And I'm going That's to teach you That's how I you started about, with my podcast. Yeah, yeah. And now you do one called The Future of Photography, which is all about phones. <laughs> <laughs> I know it? it's not. I'm no, 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 no. I'm exaggerating. Of course I'm exaggerating. But the point, the, the, the thing is, is when I see now, and, and be inter this is the thing I'd like to ask you three. When I see uh, a podcast, or a YouTube video that's uh, or, or a, an 
online course you could buy or anything to do with learning that says I'm going to teach you the te- you know the the fundamentals behind photography I just look at that and I think well why nobody needs to learn that stuff anymore <laughs> so discuss <laughs> uh, are you saying like learning math now that we all have yeah that that is yeah. kind of equates to that doesn't it is, is yeah. it and then, well so so let's let, so let me be a bit more specific then to make a to, to make a type of image right you know let, whatever type you think of the you know it, using traditional photographic techniques there is some stuff you need to know you do need to know the the, the inter actions between shutter speed and sensitivity and aperture and things like that arguable um, do you uh, really it, it, yes <laughs> but 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 would you but if you were if you were learning right a lot of, a lot of these 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 guys and, and, and ladies as well but they they'll, they'll they want to sell you some something some learning based upon teaching you a beginner for teaching beginners how to do photography properly and for those watching the video my properly is in air quotes <laughs> <laughs> They they're selling you they're they're trying to sell you an aspirational goal they are trying to sell you that you can be like them being out in the wilderness uh well, that be virtually impossible yeah. to do and then taking the best photos in the world and become famous that's what they're selling they're i'd be very interested you. chris to know how you did that without visuals <laughs> i just can't imagine well, how i would if i had no visuals and somebody was talking to me as a complete <laughs> beginner about <laughs> depth of field and they showed me nothing or you know, they were talking about all these things, but they didn't show me what they meant. How the hell would you I? You know, there learn? are there are there are bugs out there that, uh, from an aerodynamic point of view, there's no way they can fly, but they don't know that, so they do fly. <laughs> the bumblebee is a good example. Um, oh, the, okay. the, so I'm I'm a bumblebee. I try. <laughs> I, I tried it and it worked and uh, I, I was That's really good looking I'm, back I'm, I'm, looking back in the rearview mirror I was very nervous. are all those first episodes it. still available oh yes they are and yeah they are, well we got to go back and check those out they are see. they are uh, pretty much the first 10 episodes are about uh, this is the the aperture this is the shutter this is uh, and so on like very basic technical things uh, and in my naivety, I was was convinced that after 10 episodes, that would have been it. The, <laughs> I would have covered photography. And then mm. I slowly dawned on me that, no, there's probably a bit more. <laughs> a bit and more. so for me, this was the biggest, most amazing learning process of all of mm. them. So, um, and like, it did work. Yeah, I mean, and me, and the, the reason it worked without yeah, visuals worked was well. because people weren't necessarily there to 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 learn people were there to hear stories people were there okay. to uh, it's, be it, inspired it, to be inspired did you it, have it, a little obviously a little community built into that where people shared yes. their pictures yeah, yeah yes yeah. and there was there was a forum back then when forums yeah. were still a thing yeah uh now that is on discord on slack and wherever um and of course, on on the bigger platforms, but um, yeah, it, it was it was the co- community it was a big aspect of it. It still is yeah. a big aspect of it. So, mm-hmm. um, which is why we have the Discord, which is why there are places for us to to socialize, to hang out, to share, because um, that is part of this whole podcasting thing. Absolutely, I agree. I mean, you know, I, when I I've um, taught directing, um, you know, the and I may have mentioned this before. Somewhere along the line, but but you know the the students are always you know what camera, you know what lens, how you know blah 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 what editing uh, software you need and and I basically start the class and I I tell them that I can teach them everything there is to know about the technique of directing the basics in about two or three hours, that's it, but. To understand what that means, you have to have something to say. You, you have to have some life experience. You need to live your life. You need to read. Oh, shock from the students. Read. You know, why read when I have Google and, and my phone? Um, because, you know, and I would say it's the only way of getting inside other people's consciousness to see the world in a different way to travel to experience pain and pleasure and strife and all of that stuff so that when you come back to your 
your your process, whatever it is, as a painter, a poet, a photographer, whatever it is, there's a reason and an intention in building up your work or expressing your work. Um, you know, like Emer, you come from a long tradition of kind of English landscape painters. There is a direct correlation between that work and your work, you know, whether it is conscious or unconscious or semi-conscious, mm. but it's there. Semi-conscious most of the time. <laughs> people who, who, especially after Christmas holiday, For sure. th there are people who really, really um, need the technology learning uh, as a crutch to avoid confronting who they are or becoming an artist. A very good friend of mine, Chris Doyle, who's an amazing uh, cameraman. Uh, you know, he's often said to his students when he's taught at Camry Maj or somewhere like that, don't try to be like me. You don't drink enough. <laughs> you haven't had the 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 kind of pain in my in your life that I have. You haven't traveled enough. You so if you want to live your life, you have to find out who you are and then apply it to the techniques that we all use. It's just a decision we make about, you know, front light, back light, side light, you know, no light. But that's to an end. And if we don't have a vision of what that end would be, it doesn't necessarily have to be achievable, mm -hmm. but a goal, then all the, you know, the technical learning in the world is not going to serve you. It's just going to make mediocre images. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I said that, but no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all good. It's all it's all food for the topic, isn't it? It's yeah, because how how do you how do you make a, a, a photography podcast as useful and relevant and enjoyable and informative as as everybody would like to be? Um, I I'm going to caveat by this because I do feel slightly a bit of a fraud at calling this the pro the the you know, this show the the trouble with photography <laughs> podcasts. I really kind of, because I think podcasts are actually not the worst offenders. Here, I think I uh, think podcasts are about all the things that we've discussed. And, I think it's and worse rarely, worse on YouTube, isn't it? Yeah, I think I think so. Ra rarely, I have to there say, we ra go. rarely point our fingers find towards YouTube. There we go. <laughs> yes, <laughs> what 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 people are watching us on right now? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but are we we're, we aren't classic YouTubers. We are just we snuck in through the through the back door somehow. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we yes, yes. We're frauds. We have, we, yeah, really. but it, we well, yeah, fake it till you make it. But the it, I, I think podcasts are not the, the worst because often podcasts are more subtle, and possibly it's because you get you you can be much more free form, and you can certainly be much longer form. I mean, you wouldn't watch a YouTube video for two hours every week, I don't think. No. Um, although, although having said that, now I, yeah, that that probably is where happy shooting is, isn't it, Chris? <laughs> It is, but again, I mean, that's, um, for those not in the know, is my German photography podcast, and those episodes can be two hours long, And but that is still, first and foremost, an audio podcast with the video format kind of uh, tacked onto it um, since COVID, pretty much, and... It is now becoming more visual, but it's still we, we're still making a point in producing it in a way that um, that you can listen to it and not feel like you're missing out on anything. Yeah, yeah. So it's and, and you know, I, but yeah, but there I, are I've people done... who watch it for the entire episode. Yes. Uh, that's 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 fantastic i mean i you know have having made many two hour long podcasts with the sunny 16 crew um you know there are people that listen all the way through uh so yeah. but i think you know the you get much you get, you get much more freedom i think as as an audio based podcaster than you would do say as a as a youtuber who has to you know who has to be much more concise if, if nothing mm -hmm. else um uh, and of course you know video is there's a huge amount of, of production yeah in video that compared to your average podcast 
Um, so, uh, you know, I don't think podcasts are the, uh, are the worst offenders here. I suspect it is you know, possibly YouTubers and, and social media gurus uh, and, and such forth. Uh, you know, so I do feel a bit of a fraud calling this the trouble with put- photography podcast. But I, I'm not that clickbait. apologetic. because oh, clickbait. Yeah. Well, <laughs> me? Never. Can I, Never. Can I How ask day? you a question? <laughs> yeah, Since go this is the future of photography... Where do you think the future of photography podcasts is heading? Well, do you know what? Or where are they? I think we're I think we're doing some different stuff now than we were twelve months ago or or two years ago with future of photography. We are. Uh, what are we doing different? I mean, we have the whole video angle, of course, which is different. Uh, you know, we more voices, which is fantastic. You know, to to have four of us on the team is and and to have four of us chatting most weeks, I think is is amazing. I I thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, I we've talked a bit more recently about. Um, making photographs right we've we've mm-hmm. made some images and we've shared some images that we've made recently and and i think that you know that again as, as ema said it's a little bit challenging to do that for audio only but you know now we're sort of blending the video with the audio if there's there's ways of making that work mm-hmm. so i i think there's uh, i i think it's more about actual images i think is 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 a direction i would like to to, to see photography podcasts in in the round going and and what do i think that means for us as a podcasting team well hey that's up for us all to discuss isn't it and for our listeners to comment on as well but uh you know i've enjoyed the the image focused stuff that we've done recently i'm looking forward to setting more challenges for the team in 2021 you know and mm-hmm. uh you know getting getting us out there and be, being that being the cause of for some photography rather than just you know rambling on about it every week and- <laughs> and uh, what, well, t- my answer to the question, what is the future of photography podcast is you're seeing it unfold right here in front of your eyes. <laughs> and it is a morphing, changing thing over time. So just um, keep watching and keep listening. And um, this is not, this is not going to stand still. We'll this, figure it out. We'll yeah, figure it we out. are, we, you are on, everyone who's listening is on a, on a journey with us um, to find something which yeah. we're probably, probably yeah. not really sure ourselves where we want to take it. So it's an experiment. And I love it being an experiment. That's what, what, that's what podcasting is for me. It's a, it's a playground of different things, of different formats, of different ideas. Because if you try these kind of things in a more rigid medium like the television or radio, then uh, you're going to be shut down because it is mm. different and people don't like change. But on a podcast, people who listen to podcasts are typically more open-minded to uh to their podcasters trying mm. things out changing yeah. things around mm. uh, I've, I've learned this over the last 15 to 16 years and um so i'm i have <laughs> I, i've i've reason to believe that this is not going to be different for the future of photography now i'm 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 pleased to hear you say that because you know and i think it's not just about audio as a as a broadcast channel anyway is it because you know part, a big part of the reason i love to do the podcast is because of the the people we meet you know so i'm loving right now the interactions in the discord you know that we have for future of photography and you know just the conversations you can have there which you could you can quite happily you have much deeper conversations than you would do on a on a twitter or certainly on a an, an instagram which d- doesn't easily lend itself to to long conversations so you know i think yeah that there's a lot more depth to be explored and uh, you know there's pe- people can be more experimental we've got audio we've got you know written chat channels and on discord we've got video you know who knows where it'll go next i don't know <laughs> maybe and we'll even well, maybe we'll even meet face to face one day maybe, there maybe. is a possibility and if you're not careful i will switch this thing totally around visually and make those bubbles into triangles or something so um how about moving over uh to the picks of the week we do have picks of the week um and uh i will do the first one let me just see if i've actually set i haven't set this up yet so let me set it up 
Live Should we give you some covering show. discussion? You blah, could blah, blah, sing blah, and blah, dance you set if you up. want dance. to. No, here we go. It's here. Um, <laughs> I can't do that and stay in my bubble, I'm afraid. That is fine. My pick of the week is a technical pick of the week. And it is wow. a new format that Fuji and Fujifilm and IBM have created. It's a magnetic tape format. Now, um, magnetic tape is still an important storage medium because it is cheap compared, uh, cheap per gigabyte. And uh, it's used in... Worth every penny. And yeah, and, and, and it's very... Uh, it has a high lo longevity. It uh, lasts for tens and tens and tens of years. And uh, IBM and Fujifilm have created a magnetic tape that can store 580 terabytes, which is mind-blowing amount of data. They're using a new um, material, strontium ferrite, which is, I don't know, it's just possible to put more on that all uh, they, they, they say as all well, i do is see the tape flaking <laughs> off the base well I look it, at tape. that's they, all i see they they say 30 years uh, at least and uh, 317 gigabytes per square inch of tape so oh, that's <laughs> just crazy that is bonkers well, uh, it's <laughs> but hey, uh, I, f I find this kind of stuff. I used to work for a company that had backup products. So um, I used to deal with tape a lot in one of my pasts. And yeah, I was going to so say, I yeah, but ba the backup tapes. I saw this article and I was amazed because I, I mean, I know that there are still some use cases for it. I have a friend who's a recording engineer who back backs up lots of old stuff yeah, on data tapes. Um, yeah, just, but I, it, I didn't think that we'd be seeing, uh, you know, a, a launch of a new, uh, a new product. But the density of that is is astonishing. A, a single and we, tape and we create a lot of data. Our sensors are getting more and more megapixels, and our videos are getting more and more um, high quality, less compression, bigger data rates, that kind of stuff. So you can't just. I mean, we. we at this point, I have two terabytes backed up to the cloud, to a service that I pay, um, mm. which is a lot, two terabytes, but uh, th just the amount of data is, is increasing. So backup is going to be more difficult in the future. So I don't expect that to be a product for the home. Um, we're probably talking no, tens no. of thousands for, for a tape drive and that kind of stuff, but um, there's stuff out there that uses tapes and uh, that uses it a lot so i don't know i can i can see a you know a little miniature cassette that'll back up you know 10 terabytes or sure or more just as a home product using yeah bring technology. back the c90 <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay. <Hi> omega <laughs> next next on the list is let's see um imar how about you yeah, this is the lamest pick of the week ever, but I'm doing it again. The three six five this time. Oh, at this time, project. I'm back <laughs> uh, on Instagram, which I haven't gone near for a very long time. So come over and say hello. Uh, uh, yeah, oh. started again. So um, hopefully I'm going to keep it up again for another three hundred and sixty five. Awesome. Love it. Wonderful. Because your last year's one was on Flickr, wasn't it? The 366 yeah, you just yeah. finished. Yeah, I just finished. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I said, mix it up. And also the whole community thing. And I, I, I understand that I'm hideously antisocial. So um, I think it's <laughs> time to make a bit of an effort. So. Well, that's you why are, podcasting you know, is good. Th there is a, I have it somewhere in my files, but after a year, there's a, kind of a service publisher or whatever that'll just pull all your images out of Instagram, print a book for it, oh. and send it to oh, you. that'd be good. Not super expensive. Yeah, yeah. I, I've done it over the last three or four years yeah. as a record. Oh, I'm definitely doing and it at the, the end of this. the quality is spectacular, much, much stronger than you, one would imagine, mm -mm. but it is a great way of keeping a... A record, and you can obviously make more copies and hand them out. Yeah, actually, so. yeah, my friend actually did one of those uh, pretty similar thing with Facebook. That it was, and uh, oh my goodness, I was really impressed when I saw it. Um, it had gone back over ten years, and oh, just nice. it was a big book, and like there was, I was in it. Um, there was loads of people in it from ten years ago, and my kids when they were really small, and I just had such fun flicking through that. So um, definitely. 
they are very good quality. I've seen them. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. And yeah. last but not least, there is uh, Jeremiah. You sent us something about dark matter. Well, I th I'm, this is another technical uh, achievement. But this is in a, basically a bunch of cheap lenses, relatively, pulled together into an array uh, that has uh, really superseded some of the more advanced telescopes. Um, it, it's basically uh, like computing over multiple computers, you know, um, creating a, a kind of a data array, but this is a visual array. It's absolutely a fascinating article and shows you what is possible uh, when people uh, behave as bumblebees. <laughs> Just go for it. There we um, go. They did it. Uh, you know, it, it is a, uh, I think, an amazing achievement and uh, something that will inspire, um, I think, exploration and more sophisticated uses of uh, high quality lenses uh, arrayed. So it's just for those who need inspiration about what to do with their old lenses there you go Going well right. that yeah. is very cool yeah i've heard i've heard mm. of the dragonfly array with um 48 lenses and and them actually discovering like kept yeah. discovering like a new galaxy that kind of thing so yeah. um pretty amazing so there you go yeah that brings us to the end of the future of photography episode hmm where are we 160 62. 162, 162 uh, for the 4th of January 2021 and uh, we'll be back in a week from now and uh, of course you can find us on the Twitters on the Instas at TFOP now or join our Discord tfttf.com slash join TFOP it's all linked in the description yeah and I'm especially interested this week to hear from people who've got ideas about how we should continue to evolve the future of photography as a podcast yes, yes. <laughs> let us know yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and uh, yeah be back in a week until then everyone take care and bye 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 bye